Peugeot has given the Boxer, its biggest van, a fighting chance in the large panel van sector due to a strong, sensible design that will appeal to careful operators. On paper, this improved third-generation version certainly looks to be a van that can, for no direct rival can significantly better either its payload or its load-carrying capacity, and few can equal its low costs of operation. Equipment levels are also superior to those of many obvious rivals. In other words, it aims to score in the areas that really matter to business users. If size matters for your business, then only the largest van will do. Something perhaps like this one, Peugeot's Boxer. This third generation model dates back to 2006, but was substantially updated in mid-2014 to create this facelifted version that we're going to look at here. Peugeot has a long history in van production, having assembled over 1.8 million LCVs since 1950, nearly a million of which have been Boxer models produced across the three generations on sale since 1994. Throughout that time, this vehicle has had its design shared with two other rivals, Fiat's Ducato and Citroën's Relay, the LCVs that continue to provide this Boxer's toughest competition. That collaboration continues with this improved design, though only the Citroen model shares the same engines that Peugeot uses here. This vehicle will certainly need to make good on those glossy brochure promises if it's to face down the other four designs that populate the large van segment. Two of these, like this Boxer, are brand shared. The Volkswagen Crafter Mercedes Sprinter package and the Renault Master Vauxhall Movano Nissan NV400 collaboration. Plus, there are now much improved Ford Transit and tough Iveco Daily models to consider. Peugeot is boldly claiming that this vehicle can carry heavier payloads than these rivals, as well as delivering much improved standards of driver comfort, safety and convenience. All of these are useful attributes to have in the big van segment, but to become a real contender amongst the market's largest LCVs, this boxer will need to do more. Can this improved design enhance this model's reputation for tough practicality that delivers the solid versatility and running cost efficiency that operators are looking for? Let's find out. On the move, there's the kind of high, commanding driving position that you'd expect from a large van of this class. Your lofty perch offering great panoramic views of the road ahead. As for motive power, well, boxer buyers get the same three 2.2-litre HDI diesel engines that PSA Group partner Citroen offers in its rival relay model. These developing either 110, 130 or 150 bhp and all featuring a revised injection system for greater efficiency. At the top of the range, to suit those operators likely to be covering longer distances with heavier loads, Peugeot also offers a 3-litre HDI unit with 180 bhp on tap, an engine unique to this boxer. Most, though, will want the 130 bhp variant I'm trying here. Because this mid-range model gets the option of the engine stop-start system you can't have on the lower-powered version, it's potentially the most frugal choice in the lineup. Yet, with a useful 320 newton meters of pulling power, could, if you choose the right derivative, tow a trailer of around 3,000 kilos in weight. Around town, this van can make light work of tricky urban situations with a tight 14.24 metre turning circle between curbs, in the case of the volume L3H2 variant, and that equates to 3.87 turns lock to lock. The reasonably slick six-speed manual gear change helps in town too, which is just as well because there's no automatic option. If your town deliveries take you to places like muddy construction sites, then you might well be interested in the grip control option Peugeot offers that on loose surfaces automatically transfers drive to the wheel with the most grip. The system also includes the kind of hill descent control feature that you'd normally find on an SUV for easing you down slippery slopes. All of this would be worth its weight in gold the next time you have to continue your deliveries throughout a snowy snap. What else? Well, if you were used to the pre-facelift version of this third-generation Boxer model, you'll immediately notice that this van is quieter at speed. 
This is due to its considerable underbody and upper body strengthening, aimed at producing greater durability as well as that extra refinement. The brakes have been revised and they feel a bit more effective. Certain versions also get the option of variable assistance power steering, which becomes lighter at urban speeds and heavier to cruise. This setup is standard with the 3 liter HDI engine. Suspension is something of a Peugeot speciality and not only on its passenger cars. There's the option of self-leveling air suspension if you want it, but even in its standard form, this van rides pretty well and handles very neatly, remaining composed in the corners and smooth on the straights. If it does get away from you, then there's ABS as standard with brake assist to make it more effective, plus ESC stability control. The days when panel vans were nondescript clones of one another are thankfully behind us, and the boxer's stubby frontage is certainly distinctive. The headlights and the front grille have been restyled in this improved model to create what the brand hopes is an expressive, feline and technological look inspired by the current range of Peugeot cars. The stylized headlamps include daytime running lights and can be ordered with optional LED strips for extra overtaking presence. Further down sits a wide grille surrounded by a metallic grey finisher. Otherwise, things are much as before with this improved third generation model. The prominent three-piece bumper thoughtfully incorporates a couple of steps so that the driver can easily climb up and clean the windscreen. And those sleek headlamps are positioned high up out of harm's way, although the same can't be said for the indicators built into the large door mirrors. Moving rearwards, there's a heavy swage line that extends down both flanks above deep rubbing strips that protect the sides from minor damage. And at the back, the beefy rear bumper doubles as a step and chunky rubber buffers on each side of the rear door protect against day-to-day -day bumps and scrapes. Inside the cab, the design is less dramatic than that of the exterior, but it is thoughtfully executed. Here featuring a smarter looking dash and better quality seat trims. The driver's seat can be altered for height and the steering column is reach adjustable, so most people will be able to get comfortable with good vision ahead and to either side. Uh, there's an armrest for longer journeys, uh, though a cup holder near to the driver's right hand would be useful. And the gear stick is mounted on a dashboard rather than on a projecting moulding, so it's easy for the driver to slide across and emerge safely on the cab side. If you're getting in and out normally, however, using the driver's door, then you could find your trousers being snagged by the location of this handbrake lever. A fresh addition for this improved Mark III model boxer is a 5-inch dash-mounted touchscreen infotainment display, which makes the vehicle feel more modern inside as comes as standard, provided you avoid entry-level trim. As well as the usual stereo and Bluetooth elements, this handles features like audio streaming, text-to-speak messaging and satellite navigation. It's also the display via which you view the optional rear parking camera, the functionality of which includes what is possibly my favourite feature on this vehicle. Most rear parking camera displays come on only when you select reverse. This one does that, of course, but providing the keys are in the ignition, it also comes on whenever you open the rear doors. This means that without leaving the cab, you can see exactly what's being loaded or unloaded. It's a great and very unique security feature. And if I were an owner-operator, it's one of the things that would really sell me this van. Indeed, it's cleverness like this that makes you tend to overlook the fact that build quality isn't quite as solid as some pricier rivals. Still, everything feels built to last, with plenty of thought given to day-to-day -day usability. There are 13 different storage spaces around the cab, including a glove box, a lockable lidded bin in the middle of the fascia, spacious enough to swallow a laptop, two shelves on the passenger side of the dashboard, one above the other, plus further shelving both beneath and to the right of the steering wheel. You can even stash stuff on a 22-litre shelf above your head and in a tray beneath the driver's seat. Plus, of course, there are deep two-tiered bins in both doors, big enough here to hold a flask or a bottle of water. 
Not everything fits nicely into shelves or trays, of course, so there's a neat dash top clipboard to hold delivery notes or maps. Just as useful is the way this middle seat folds down to reveal a little desk with a clip, a pen tray and two cup holders. Unfortunately, there are no cup holders anywhere else in the cab. In developing this vehicle, the engineers pursued an intensive development programme which involved nearly two and a half million miles of road testing and over 18 and a half thousand miles of testing on poor quality and low grip surfaces. There were also a thousand water fording tests to check out the ceiling and 500,000 door slam tests. That's equivalent to nearly 10 years of intensive use. As a result of this programme, this boxer's body structure incorporates multi-point reinforcement to improve rigidity and durability. High-use, high-stress items such as these rear doors have been reinforced and high-strength door hinges are now used. Similarly, the sliding side doors have benefited from reinforced rails, redesigned runners and improved door locks to raise durability and security standards. You can feel the difference in the way this door now shuts with a quality clunk. In the increasingly closely fought large panel van sector, this boxer looks to have the full package required to make a name for itself. At launch, its all-round versatility was enough to deliver a knockout blow to many rivals, but they've improved greatly since then, though not enough to outclass this prize fighter, especially in this improved guise. The French brand has clearly thought long and hard about what operators actually want. The longer service intervals are welcome, as are the more efficient running cost returns and the greater cab refinement. Plus, this box's smart infotainment screen and its optional grip control system are genuine points of differentiation in this segment. It's the addition of extra equipment features like these that give this Peugeot an important advantage over key rivals from Ford, Vauxhall, Renault, Mercedes and Volkswagen in this segment. Of course, there are also this model Citroen and Fiat design stablemates to consider. And your choice between these three will probably come down to a close points decision, aided in this van's case by Peugeot's vast dealer network and by its wider selection of model options. It'll probably come down to trying one, sticking this boxer in the ring and working it hard. Once you've done so, you may well agree that it offers championship material.